So then, how did the turbocharger from the BMW X530D fail? Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Before we get into things, make sure you give this one a like. It really does help me out and it shows your appreciation. Now then, as I mentioned, I have went ahead and removed the turbocharger from the M57 engine. Don't worry, there is a full video showing exactly how I've removed this thing. And yeah, having a look at this thing now, I can see that, that it has failed in pretty spectacular fashion. But exactly why did this thing fail? Well, let's take a closer look. Okay, so let's have a look at the turbocharger itself. So if you saw the video where I stripped all the engine covers down and the intake pipe to try and diagnose the issue, we obviously found out the problem was with the turbocharger itself. And yeah, we noticed that the shaft had a hell of a lot of play in. Like this is, yeah, it's not looking good, is it, at this point? You have a look in here. Like the fins on the turbine are like pretty much all sheared off. And this is like a catastrophic turbocharger failure. Like this needs a new core and, uh, and then potentially it is uh, good to go again. But it's kind of made a bit of a mess of the housing as well. I'm guessing as the... As the shaft has let go, this has obviously continued to spin and like I said, those uh, fins have just been making contact with the housing and they've sort of uh, chipped away at it. But this could uh, possibly be good to go again with a, with a clean up, you know, if this is all uh, grinded back to a smooth surface again, it, you know, it could be fine to go again. But wait till you see the other side of this thing, the exhaust side. So I'll just flip it around. Have a look at that, like the turbine is is missing. Can you guys see that? Like there should be a turbine in there. It's like completely gone. So I'm guessing that it decided to uh, take an exit and, you know, flew out the exhaust and it's probably in a million pieces uh, somewhere on a dual carriageway, probably, uh, you know, pretty much. Uh, straight away when I noticed that uh, cloud of smoke from the exhaust and a, and a uh, complete loss of power that decided to let go and uh, yeah like I said take the nearest exit. So then why has this turbocharger failed? Well I don't think it really takes a genius to figure that one out. The bearings have obviously decided to let go of course, if you have a small amount of bearing uh, wear, you will notice a slight movement in the shaft, but yeah, they obviously decided to completely go at this point, and that is why we have catastrophic failure. Now then, why do bearings go on a turbocharger? Well, there's a, a number of reasons why the bearings could go. First one is, of course, just general wear and tear. Bearings are not a lifetime component. We all know wheel bearings, um, you know, they do not last forever. Generally, bearings will last 150,000 miles or so on average, in my opinion. Of course, this has only covered 111 thousand miles i believe but there is a number of reasons why bearing failure could be accelerated especially in a turbocharger you know has this had regular oil changes has it been allowed to cool down properly has the previous map that was on it you know put too much boost through it and potentially sped things up ultimately we're not going to know the exact cause for the bearings failing but we have a pretty good indication that this was just down to wear and tear. I think before I'd done all of the previous work on this car, I think the bearings were already pretty much shot. You know, another reason why the bearings themselves could fail is of course, if you was to drop a foreign object down here, typically you'll notice this if you take your car to a dealership, they'll do some engine work, they'll end up dropping a nut or a bolt down into the engine, it will eventually find its way uh, through the intake valves, through the intake ports, uh, of course, um, through the exhaust ports rather, 
and then uh, into the turbocharger and that could of course uh, smash the uh, bearings up this isn't the case with ours though you know i know i didn't drop any uh, nuts or bolts down the inlet ports so i was obviously very careful and if you if this was the case then you pretty much notice it straight away as soon as you start it up you'll notice a loud rattle and um, yeah all would not be well pretty much straight away of course another reason for the bearings failing is a lack of lubrication now the main reason for this is the oil feed pipe to the turbocharger being blocked up now i can tell you in this case this oil feed pipe is fine we have fresh oil running through this typically what happens is these like to get blocked up with carbon essentially what happens is if the turbocharger itself is not allowed to cool down properly then the oil that is inside of this thing will just bake and it eventually just turns to carbon and eventually just blocks up thus stopping the supply of oil to the bearings themselves but like i said that is not the case for us also the oil return pipe or oil drain pipe that is nice and clear as well you know no blockages in there at all that of course goes through this pipe which then goes back in to the uh, engine block so i don't think our issue was a case of oil starvation i don't think it was a case of a foreign object falling in here i think it was literally just down to wear and tear which is definitely going to help me sleep a little bit better at night the fact that the fact that i now know that i wasn't the cause for this turbocharger failing you know we've done quite a bit of work on this we gutted the dpf we gutted the catalytic converter we removed the egr we fitted in new uh, intake manifolds and the fact that this thing like blew up within about i think it was around 15 or 20 miles or so definitely got me worried but yeah i'm pretty confident now that i wasn't the cause of this but of course we will be uh, swapping this out we will be fitting a refurbished turbocharger again you guys will see that in the video the same video that i removed this one in so do stay tuned for that well then there we go we are now pretty confident of the cause for the failed turbocharger and yeah like i said i'm gonna be able to sleep a little bit better at night i was pretty confident anyway that you know this wasn't down to me but you know of course we uh, now have a better understanding you know there was a million things sort of running through my head a bunch of you guys left comments as well like oh you've done this you've done that you've done that but yeah you're never really gonna know until you uh, have a look so if you do have one of these situations yourself just try not to worry until you actually uh, get the thing removed and have a proper uh, look at things. But yeah, like I said, this is getting replaced. Do stay tuned for the video on that. I want to thank all of you guys for watching. As always, give this video a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you have not already done so, and I will see you all in the next one.